Welcome to Conversations. He's Sean Aliki. And she's Robin Farr. We have a great show for you oh, today. Yeah. Sad for Sean because he didn't get the memo that we were going to be eating on today's yeah, show. Yeah, we've got a delicious show and I scheduled a doctor's appointment and <laughs> I had to fast for a few hours so I can do my annual blood test and Robin's going to tease me with all this good food we have. He actually said at one point, you're, you're how many hours into this fast and you kind of looked at what Nora, our fabulous guest, has mm -hmm. brought and you said, well, maybe I can just postpone. Just reschedule. Yeah, yeah, no, when you've gone this far without eating, just go all the way and just then take, you can take some food home with you. Oh, I'm taking a big chunk home. Yeah, and okay. don't get me wrong, about 10 minutes after my doctor's appointment, I'm going to be covered in food. Yeah, okay, good. So that's well, how I that's, eat. That sounds beautiful. <laughs> um, so her name is Nora Landa uh, Frazier, mm -hmm. and she's Peruvian. She's gorgeous, beautiful, and she's got this energy about Peruvian cooking, which... Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people would assume is like Mexican food or something. Well, a lot of people, I think, group Central American, South American food, yeah. you know, this Latin food in one big group, and it's nothing alike. It's almost like saying, you know, French cuisine is the same as Italian cuisine just because they're in the yeah. same region, and uh -huh. it's not like that at all. They have their own, you know, native foods and native spices and things like that that they bring to the table, and I can't wait to see what she has brought for us today. What do you think uh, when you think Peruvian food? I mean, have you heard? I think beautiful women. Yes. Oh, that's, I mean, oh yeah. you asked me about food. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think spicy. I think it has a kick. Yeah. I yeah. think that you know they probably incorporate a lot of peppers. A lot of um, you know organic spices in there that we probably you know taste that you don't really get here in the states, mm -hmm. and uh, it's South American. It's on the western coast of South America, so there's probably some Brazilian yeah. influence in there, and yeah. uh, I can't wait to see. And it. I did ask her about guinea pig. I mean, mm -hmm. our, this country portrays Peruvian food sometimes as that they eat guinea pig, which apparently right. they do. They do, but they. I wonder if you can go to a restaurant and actually order guinea pig. We're going to ask her that. Yeah, yeah, but you wouldn't mm -hmm. go to a nice restaurant and get that. Not. No, I think it sounds like the people in the mountains, that's probably what was prevalent. The native indigenous people. Yes, probably, and yeah. that's what they were cooking. So we somehow in this country, like we do so often, take a stereotype and just run with it. So you can't country. get a McGinney burger at the local <laughs> McDonald's? <laughs> no, well, I'm not saying you can't. <laughs> that's a great Darn question. It. Do you want to know how I met her, Nora, uh, by yeah, the way? how'd you meet her? I love this one. When, when guests for the show mm -hmm. just kind of serendipitously come. Serendipitously? Yeah, yeah that's yeah, the word. Well, you met yeah. her through Janine Kaiser. Remember Janine Kaiser, yeah, yeah, who's yeah, been yeah, a guest right, on our show? Right. We were meeting for lunch over at Piotti, and this beautiful woman is sitting outside the restaurant, and she smiled at me, and I smiled at her. I go and sit down, and then our fabulous guest, Janine Kaiser, comes in with this woman in tow and mm -hmm. says, this is totally, you know, just a coincidence, but my friend Nora was sitting outside. You've got to meet her. You and Sean will want to do a show with her, and I was sold like that. Well, I can't wait to see, first of all, the food that she's brought. You said she's vivacious in nature. She's yes. lively, this mm -hmm. and that. So we might just have a new friend here on the Robin and Sean show. And then if we could start, if she's going to bring food, then I think we would probably want to have her on every other week. No, we just have to make sure that I get my doctor's appointment scheduled correctly and don't have to do a blood test, yeah, no an fasting. annual screening. You know? No, no I'm, it's fasting. just bad call on my part. But you know what? It's you're gonna have to tell me. I'm probably gonna take all the smells in. We should have smell vision here at conversations yeah, would be because so that would be yep, it's yep. gonna be just something else over here. And that would be perfect. She actually does presentations around the Bay mm -hmm. Area. She recently did one in Pleasanton, and she is all about. Yeah, she teaching puts on us. classes and yeah. stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, she was a teacher yeah, back in in Peru. She was she taught at the American School. Wow. So she's got that ability to teach. And so it's she in her nature to impart food. wisdom, and yes. now she's doing it with food. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And I'm Sign the last person on the planet to be doing this, but everybody's become a foodie, and they're into food trucks, and they're into fabulous food, and I am just so excited real to be quick, talking Real quick, what's your food. favorite food? Oh, gosh, real quick. One dish, if you had to have a one dish. Oh, my, I mean, like it's my last supper yeah. kind of a thing. This is terrible, but I think no. Okay, I'm gonna go right with the right thing. Salmon. Salmon. Yeah. Well, she went the say healthy a route. Red steak because I do mm. love a mm. medium rare steak. She went the healthy route. I'm gonna say chocolate and me French too. fries and salmon. Chocolate, chocolate covered chocolate. French fries. Yes, me too. That's exactly <laughs> right. That's why I like going out with you. All right, don't go away. Sean and I will be right back with Nora talking about Peruvian cuisine right here on Conversations. Mm -hmm.
Welcome back to Conversations. I told you she was beautiful. She is beautiful. I'm here on the set with two <laughs> beautiful women. I'm a little out of my league right Luckiest now. Luckiest guy on the planet right tell now. We told you all about Peruvian cooking and cuisine. Well, no, we didn't tell you everything. We told you we want to know about it, right? Well, we saved the best for last. Yes, right. <laughs> so, Nora Landa Frazier. Am I saying it correct? You are. Mm -hmm. say, it, say it the way you would say it in your country. Nora Landa and then the Frazier because that's just the American pronunciation. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so Frazier, okay. Okay. And we're going to be talking Peruvian cuisine today because we kind of were thinking that Peruvian cuisine would be very similar to Mexican food. Yeah, you know, like you got some tacos and some burritos, we right? Naively thought we naively that thought that. We naively thought that. It's nothing, I mean, there's probably some influences that are shared here and there, but it's not, uh, not at all like Mexican cooking. Well, we can have, like, we, they have one third of our ingredients. Oh, it, really? Yes. So, okay. Yes. What, what's the influence then of Peruvian okay. cooking? Where does it come from? First of all, when people say, what is so great about Peruvian cuisine? You know, why are you so excited about it? Why is it popular and trendy nowadays? And actually, there's just so much to draw from. Is it the history? Is it the geography? Or the actually the creativity of Peruvians? Um, a little bit of the history. Cusco, which is what everybody knows about Peru, Cusco Machu Picchu, is in Peru, in the highlands of Peru. Yes. Cusco actually means navel or belly button. And that was the capital of the Inca Empire that covered most of South America. Bolivia, Ecuador, part of Argentina, part of Brazil. So the Incas were, you know, the owners of all this area. And something else that's really interesting, everybody says the Incas this and the Incas that, but the Incas were actually 14 that lived. You know, they took over and they were supposed to be the sun, sons of the sun. But the people themselves are called the Quechua people. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the language that they speak, the Quechua. And uh, Spanish. No, no, oh. they speak the Quechua and it is a language. And uh, a lot of the words are, not a lot, but roots of it are still in our in our Spanish vocabulary because everything fused eventually. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the interesting things about the food. And okay. the people you mentioned, the, these are the indigenous people okay. of Peru, right? Okay, these are the indigenous people, but the Incas, which is what we know about today, they are the tip of the iceberg. Mm. We have the oldest city in America, Caral. It is the first city of all the Americas. And when we say Americas, we mean North, mm -hmm. Central, and South mm -hmm. America. Um, it's 200 kilometers north of Lima. And they date back to 2,500 years BC. This dates wow. back to, well, now what, what is that? That, that looks like a, like our, a pepper. Yeah, this is, is our, that a Chile? our ají. I guess Chile is a word for it. Mm -hmm. This is the soul of Peruvian food. And all Peruvians have been having a romance with this forever <laughs> and ever. Okay. The old ones had this, um, in all their textiles, it was an icon. And it has many properties. They called it the, the passion food because it makes you laugh. It makes you cry. <laughs> it has healing properties. It's good for digestion. And I figured that out because when I start eating it, I can't stop. Mm. And it, you, it can Is be it a, hot? Is it spicy? It is. I have deveined it. I took the seeds out to make the, the paste. paste. Uh, and if you try it with a spoon, you're going to see that it is a little hot. I can eat it. But typically with peppers now, if you don't eat the seeds and the veins on the inside and you stay to the outer shell, you're okay, right? It's not going to burn your tongue? With this pepper, it will not. It will not. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Because I kind of have a love-hate relationship with peppers. Really? Because when I used to say, when I was being naughty as a child, my parents would, you know, rather than you soap, they would use a pepper. <gasps> yeah. When you if said, I said bad a bad word at the dinner table, oh, I, I got like a pepper. This. In my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Really? So, That's yeah. Right. yeah. So I kind of you an know, Armenian I, pepper. An Armenian. Yes, it was. <laughs> yeah. It was, and it was very hot. Let me tell you. And I made sure I never repeated those words oh, again. Oh yeah, I'm but, sure uh, show. but you know, peppers, especially in Central and Southern America, peppers are a huge part of the cuisine, mm. and it 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 gives it that kick, you know, that that yes. I think that a lot of foods in this in this world lack. Mm -hmm. That's why I love so much about Central American yeah. and Southern American foods. Yeah, as mm -hmm. a matter of fact, there is practically no recipe that does not have that ají. 
So you make, so you go around, you're all around the Bay Area showing people how to make Peruvian cuisine, and that little staple is one of your first things you must teach, right? You or don't can leave we home without it. Can we get it here? Yes, that is what I found fascinating. These three products, mm -hmm. as is, these three here. Those three, okay. you just go to these Latin markets in Concord off Monument Avenue. Okay. And I just stack myself because they give. That's one of the things that give Peruvian food a unique taste, the olives. Okay. We have olives as garnish, like what you're gonna see today. Um, so these are the olives here. These are the peppers that you just showed us in the bottle of rice. Yes. Okay, so we can get all of this. And what's yes. the pump? And this is a third variety. It's a dry pepper. It's not that hot, and we use peppers mostly for flavoring. Yes, okay. There is another one that's really hot called the rocoto. 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 Oh, <laughs> I would I have a speech impediment if I were, <laughs> uh, seriously, if I were Spanish speaking, I would be, it would be the equivalent of the list because I can't roll my R's. You have yeah. a speech impediment without <laughs> speaking Spanish. <laughs> I know. It's a good but thing she yeah. looks beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. I can't do that. I can't do the. Well, for, since uh, you, you, you just, you're born with it. Yeah, that's exactly what I think. I can't I'm roll just, the R's yeah. either. Can I go back to finish the. Uh, I was telling you about the history all of yes. South America, right? And how old these cultures were. They're supposed to be one of the six uh, beginning cultures in the whole world. Wow. That old. Now we go to Spain. They had heard that there was a river called Biru. And around there was the gold. So they sent their explorers there. And that is how Spain arrived. They came and they conquered, they took over. And then they started sending their royalty, their viceroys and their nobles. Mm. And uh, Lima was uh, founded as the city of kings in the 1500s. And that is when the exchange comes in. The Spanish come and they brought the olives, the onion, the lemon, a lot of these spices that from uh, Arabia because the Moors dominated there for about 800 years. Cinnamon and sugar and sugar cane. And Peru and the, um, the explorers took back chocolate. And that's when all of Europe is in love with the chocolate. I, I just saw a movie the other day in France. It was a big deal. And the Incas ate it. See how I say Incas uh -huh. instead of saying the Quechua people? Because yeah. that's just how it is said. They ate it, but they didn't sweeten it. The chocolate was probably yeah. really good for them. And then the Spanish brought the grapes, too. And all the immigrants. The port of Callao is like our Ellis Island. They started planting their grapes, and eventually we produced this brandy, which is called uh, pisco, and it's a distilled uh, green grape brandy. And our national drink is the pisco sour. But this is what I think is fascinating. The pisco sour was invented by a Californian. In Lima, Peru. Oh, but Peru. yeah, there you go. <laughs> God love us. His name was Victor Morris. He was a miner, and uh, he was up in the mines, and he ran out of whiskey to make his whiskey sour, which is a popular drink here. And so he says, "Okay, we'll do it with pisco," and that was it. Yeah. It just. And you can get this here. Bevmo. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so a lot of these ingredients, or what you're saying, are not unique or not uh, native. <coughs> to Peru, no. but, but they've been from Spain and from, you know, the Moors brought some ingredients over, right. Europeans brought some ingredients over. So there's a lot of influence from outside of Peru in the foods today. Oh, yes. Which we're going to get into the second segment of. You're right. going to show us how to incorporate all these into mm -hmm. the dish that you brought us. And it's the, I think it's the combination of the mm -hmm. things that you we might be able to find everywhere, but we wouldn't know to put them together to make them Peruvian. That is, that's the unusual yeah. thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Peru only had the potato, which is the gift to the world. Yes. The mm -hmm. queen so you thought and the that lady came from Ireland. of the Andes. Mm -hmm. There's 800 varieties of potato that are studied in the uh, potato center International mm -hmm. Potato Center in Lima. And we have the quinoa. Look how popular oh, it is yeah, here today. Really, yeah. Very healthy. Mm -hmm. Starting to replace rice everywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have the yuca. You see, those are, they weren't too varied. But the Inca up in the mountain ate fresh fish of the day. We have the richest coast of the world. Wow. 
Pacific mm. of the, all the seafood because mm. of the Humboldt Current. I have heard of the yucca. Let's cut to a commercial and when we come back. You brought a dish, but I also want you to go into the business about the yucca, how, what we're supposed to do. I've seen this at Safeway. I just don't know quite what to do with it. And so okay. you're going to show us that because when she's done, it looks like French fries. <laughs> that looks delicious. <laughs> but I think it's healthy. Um, but uh, we're talking with Nora Landa Frazier, and she is the area's Peruvian chef. She is doing a Peruvian cooking class. She's been just recently in Pleasanton, but upcoming she is going to be in Emeryville at the Paulding and Company Kitchen on Thursday, October 3rd from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. and uh, they're located at 1410D 62nd Street in Emeryville. You can check out their website www.paldingandco.com but the point is you're going to learn how to do what we're going to see next. We're talking with Nora Landa Fraser. Don't go away, Sean. I have much more. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to Conversations. Sean, you picked the wrong day to do that fasting that we all have to do annually when we get our blood test to make sure we're healthy because you're not I scheduled a doctor's appointment eat. when I shouldn't have scheduled a doctor's appointment, I know, and, I, yes. and I'm not supposed to eat for 12 hours. But That's all right. I I'm going to take care of this for you. I know, but you know what? I get to take a big yeah, portion of it home, right, Nora? Home. All right. Yeah. We're talking with Nora Landa Frazier, <laughs> and she's a wonderful Peruvian cook who teaches all around the Bay Area how to make Peruvian cuisine. And um, w one thing I really wanted to get to before we get away from it, before I taste this fabulous, is that a crab roll? Yes, it's Ugh. causa. Ooh, yeah. lovely, I and can't wait. if the wait. viewers at home could just smell this, yeah. it is yeah. amazing. <laughs> we need smell-o-vision is what we need. <laughs> <Yeah. in this laughs> That's a good one, That's a good one. But the yucca plant, We've all heard of it. Actually, I have heard of it. Had you heard of the yucca? I had heard of the yucca, the yucca root. This is right. it right yes. here. I'm going to go ahead and pick this up so that I can sort of show our viewers. This is available at our local grocery stores, yes. right? Okay, and there's a picture Safe of it way. on, and this is what happens when you peel it. This is the look you get, right? Right. It's, um, it reminds me of jicama. I have never it heard of It looks like jicama. it. Yeah. It does. Jicama is a root as well, but you said uh -huh. it's a distant cousin to a potato. I, I, if you want to put them in a category, because yes. you can do about the same thing with both of them. And you yes. also said it's the starchiest vegetable there is. The starchiest vegetable. You do not eat it raw. Oh, so don't g take no. a bite of that. Like you don't eat a potato raw unless right, you're just really I mean, hungry. That's so you know? true. Yes. Yeah. I would like to, to uh, show you, for instance. Yes. Thank you. When, you go, when I go to Safeway, I pick up the yucca and I break it in half on my little cart edge. And it needs to be completely white, pristine, nothing. Sometimes you open it up, it has little black spots. It's no good. So you do that before you've even purchased it because you're not going to go home with a bad yucca. Exactly. I, I do the same thing with apples. I like to take bites out of the apples. <laughs> Are you that guy that stands yeah, up in the grape and, and just... You know, I'll go ahead and put it back. I just, what I do, or I'll open bags of potato chips and I'll right, eat make a sure few and fresh. make sure they're not stale. <laughs> well, the first time I did it, I remember going to the boys that work there and I said, excuse me, I need to do this. Oh, they said, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Mm -hmm. And now I just do it. And if it has black dots, I just leave it. Now, what do the black dots mean? It's, it's just it means it's that when you boil overripe? it, it's going to be stiff. Maybe mm. it ha might have a little bitter taste. It has to be white. White, like okay. This. So and that means it's fresh. white on the inside. Yes. And then once you take it home, the cook, the peeling is really. It looks like bark. This is what you do, and, and the bark will just, look how easily oh, wow. it comes that off. that does come off easily. Yes. Oh, okay, See? easy. To, okay. Now, I'll be honest, not all the time it's this easy. Sometimes These must be extremely fresh. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. But that's what happens, and then once you have it, You've you got put it, it on the board, and you cut it lengthwise. And you end up with these. This is if you want to do the fried yucca sticks. Okay. First you boil these. Okay. And you can tell when they're done, probably 20 minutes. And you eat them boiled. You eat them. I love them boiled with butter. Usually I will because when you fry them, of course, you have the fat. Yeah. But fried, they're just exquisite, especially with a sauce. Do it taste that a little bit like a French fry or is it? Yes. This is a typical Peruvian restaurant nibble. You go uh -huh. and you say, "Yuquita, por favor," and they bring you your. Uh, so it's a good appetizer then. Yeah. Yes, uh -huh. it is. It is an appetizer, oh, especially yeah. with a sauce. 
The sauce and here, this one right here? No, this okay. is my yellow pepper sauce. Oh, I deveined it. Yes, okay. So you're going to taste some of this. I want to taste some of that. Please, please that do. that little fork. Can I have that little fork? Yes. I'm so sorry to be now, eating in front Now, the peppers you're talking you, about, Sean, I know. But I want to let you know. I want to let you know what this tastes like. Now, this is from the pepper Turn that you away. had in the first segment that you said was evoked all those emotions like passion and love yes. and this and that. And it's a fruity. Oh. I love the texture too. <laughs> yeah. oh, what the texture? I, I wish I could describe. Can you just please I'm, tell me I'm it doesn't sorry. taste good? Well, just tell me it's disgusting. So I know. I do you want to smell it? Yeah. I do. I'm smelling Can everything over. Yeah. Yeah. It is delicious. Oh, I would wow. just let me see. Let this me doesn't see. have anything <laughs> is in it other than the pepper itself. There's no mm. other no, spices. No, it's the pepper, garlic, oil, mm. and, and salt. Oh, that's the. I'm sorry wow. about the garlic it part too. It does have a little bit of garlic. Oh, fabulous, isn't that? Wonderful? Garlic. I'm gonna take some of that home with me. Yes, mm. garlic oh. enhances all the flavors. You don't necessarily have to say, oh, there's a har garlic, but it just made it yeah. delicious. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's fabulous. That's oh, absolutely. Was, yeah. Did it have a little fabulous. kick to it? Oh, it has a kick to it, but you can just imagine dipping all sorts of things into here and using. It's fruity. It's, it's fruity. Oh, yes. mm, great texture. Okay. Uh -huh. So we've got our yucca. Now, tell us, this is something you've made recently for the folks here in the Tri-Valley. This is the um, crab roll. This is a crab roll. It looks like a giant burrito, but it's not. No. <laughs> <laughs> but you're, you're, you're right. That's what but it reminds you. It exactly. Like yes. I just want to say one last thing. Once the yucca is boiled, you put it in the freezer, you forget about it. And you bring it back in a month and you fry it or, or thaw it out and heat it up and it's perfect. So mm. it's really a sturdy so ingredient. So it's almost like pasta, it's better left over. Yeah. <laughs> yes, left it's over easy. Leftover pasta is delicious, so yeah. leftover yeah. yuca sounds like it's the I same agree. thing. Okay, okay, this is the crab causa and this is a very popular dish. It is dramatic in its presentation. This is just mm. one of the presentations. And the, it's unique in the mix of flavors. Mm. Okay. And this dish is an exact, a uh, perfect example of the fusion of uh, Peru with the Spanish ingredients. This is versatile. If this one is uh, filled with crab. You can fill it with vegetables if you like for a vegetarian. Well, uh, before we get to the, the inside, describe mm -hmm. what's going on here on the outside. Tell us what's, what you're working here with, okay. what the garnishes dough? are and, and yeah. The, yeah, the dough. First, you get the white potato uh -huh. and you put it through the press. You peel it, and once it's warm, you season it with this. Mm. That's why it has that or that more oh, of a yellowy taste. So that's taste. potato. This is potato. This is boiled potato, but cold. Now, who would have thought of doing this? That's creativity. Mm -hmm. So this boiled cold potato gets seasoned with lemon juice, key limes, mm -hmm. oil, and this pepper. Mm. So when you try the potato, at the end you're going to say, "Hey, this is a slightly hot, but." Not it, you know it's but just it's not bothering no it just says hello potato yes. with an <laughs> it just says hello or hola <laughs> it just says hello yeah okay so then you sp I spread out the potato and I put a crab filling and that's also seasoned with a little bit of mayonnaise a little bit of lemon and white onion and that's one of the secrets of Peruvian cuisine is that you season everything mm. you know, just don't throw this and this together that's why when you tasted it. It goes all over the place with the flavors. Mm -hmm. So there, your mouth is watering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is, I know. Are you, let me ask you this. Are you, because this is how I'm Armenian, and my mom's always cooked some delicious, she's a phenomenal cook. She cooks some very good Armenian cuisine. But when you ask her what the recipe is, and I'm curious to know Peruvian cooks are like this as well. You ask her to write down the recipe, and it's always a little bit of this, a pinch of this, a pinch of that. Can't she does it just by memory or by oh, taste. Yes. Is yes. That how, it sounds like you guys cook the same way. That you uh, taste a little bit. If it needs yeah. a little bit more, you add a little bit. I didn't use a recipe for this. It's mm -hmm. all calculation. It's, you just bring it to the taste that you want. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. And when you're teaching this, you teach people I how to... I have to take the recipe. Yes. Oh, you do? <laughs> I, they need to see the amounts That's and true. stuff like that. But I will taste it to... To bring, you know, to so that it is the way it should be. So usually, are you? This is how I cook. I'm, I'm usually full before the meal is even done because I've been <laughs> tasting here and there. Yeah. So are you didn't. the same? Are you usually by the time it's all done, you're feeding everybody else and not yourself? <laughs> it depends. Yes, when I'm feeding other people, I'm not even hungry. Mm. Yeah. It, you know, I just yeah, I enjoy it, it the next day. Yeah, right. But if it's for me, right. and I cook for myself, I love it. It's it's a hobby. So you cut me a piece right now. I'm so sorry again. Okay, so okay. I'm taking a big chunk of that. I know you are. Yeah. Taking so it you home, but I want to so have it because we don't have much time left, and I want to taste it. Okay, once it was like that, I yeah. rolled it. Yeah. Okay, and then the garnishing is the Peruvian olives, and this is our typical Creole sauce. It's red onion, and there again is the yellow pepper, mm -hmm. vinegar, and oil. 
and that's it. So well, let's that, serve some of this up. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, it does. looks so beautiful. What a, and what, like you said, what a presentation. And you were saying too that everybody, uh, it, the, the women maybe maybe more men as well now, but women in Peru they cook. They're like the Italians. You just you grow well, up yes. cooking. Yep. Especially mm -hmm. my generation. A lot of maybe the younger mm -hmm. kids of today they mm -hmm. they won't or they mm -hmm. don't. Oh, it looks beautiful. And I just want um, all of our staff here to know today that you are getting yours. Yeah, you are getting After yours. After I get my uh, Yeah, make sure, making sure, <laughs> of course, that that Sean Oops. gets his. But um, oh. th you've brought lunch for us all. This is just wonderful. Oh, it looks so now, great. Now, is that just fresh crab that's fresh inside there? Fresh crab with and, and avocado, yes. Wow. And it's again, the land of all that fish. Mm -hmm. So this is, the crab is something that's probably fairly readily available yes. in Peru. Look at all the right. presentation. Oh, look at this. Wow. I gave me. birth to that. This is that gorgeous. Is <laughs> now oh, you, you don't get me. You know, I've got fork. a fork and I'm wait. so sorry. So I'll just let me tell you all about this and what you can look forward to <laughs> later on today. Mmm. Mm. Oh, mm. you make me feel bad. Mm. It is so good. Tell me more. You're right. The, the potato outside with the Fabulous sauce. What a blanket for the perfect seasoned exactly. crab on the inside. Now, this is served oh. usually as a meal by itself with some yuca, or is there other no, dishes? No, the yuca has nothing mm. to do with this. The yuca mm. is the nibble. That would be an appetizer. This is an appetizer. We eat a lot, yeah. Oh. Like uh, for, for an mm. appetizer, but it would be a small, you know, a thin slice. You are fabulous. You are a wonderful cook. <laughs> Again, this is uh, Nora Landa Fraser. She's teaching all around the Bay Area, but her next one coming up, we'll have to step outside the Tri Valley for this, but it's happening on Thursday, October 3rd from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. So you get home from work, give the family something fast to eat, and then get on over to Paulding and Company Kitchen in Emory, 1410D on 62nd Street in Emeryville, and their website is www.paldingandco.com. Dot com. Um, if you'd like to find out a little bit more about Peruvi Peruvian cuisine, you can go straight to emailing Nora at Nora underscore Landa at yahoo.com and her phone number, she's letting us give that out too, 925-408-5175. She does parties, she's local, she's... Um, do you do house calls? You. Oh boy. I mean, do, house do you do house calls? Because that, that would chef. be delicious. Mm, I can't wait for you to try it. I know, Call I me can. later. And she's right. so lively and vivacious she's and vibrant. Fabulous. You know, it translates to the food. I like it. That's right. You are fabulous. Thanks so much for being Thank on the show. Thank you very today. much Thank for you. having me. And that'll do it for this edition of Conversations. Hope you've enjoyed it as much as I clearly have. Sorry. And I'll enjoy it in a couple yeah. hours. So <laughs> if you enjoyed our show as much as uh, we did, Please check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash tv30.org and let us know by clicking the like button. All right, we'll do it again next week. Until then, he's Sean. And she's Robin. Thanks for joining us. Goodbye. If you'd like to order a copy of this show, please visit our website at trivalleytv.org.